good morning everyone uh, I hope you guys had a wonderful weekend I'm very excited about this new week that is just beginning uh, this morning like we had announced we are finally starting our morning encounter and uh, over the next couple of weeks or at least the next couple of six sessions I want to focus on spiritual disciplines I want to talk about what we need to do to build ourselves, what we need to do to grow, to grow in our faith, to grow in our spirit, to grow in our walk with God. And so I'll, I'll be uh, starting out with spiritual disciplines. And before I say that, I want to thank everybody who was part, who participated in the, uh, uh, the 30 days glory access program that we just ended on the 14th. I thank you to all of you guys who uh, were part of it and who really took the time and the effort to, uh, to pray and fast. I want to thank everyone from the various regions who took part in the, in the closing all night prayer. And uh, I really heard the testimonies and it was good. Uh, I was so glad about all the nice reports. So thank you guys. And one one of the things that God told me while we were having uh, our own uh, uh, all night prayer here in Yaoundé was that uh, glory access actually was just beginning. He said that was the last day of the 30 days. And then what I heard in my spirit was that we are actually just beginning. He said, the real glory access begins now after these 30 days. There has to be a real, a really intentional, a really intentional, uh, deliberate and passionate quest for, for God. And, uh, you know, we, we need to deliberately spend time continuing to do what we began to do during these 30 days. And so I want to... I believe that's why it's important and expedient that we talk about spiritual disciplines over the next couple of sessions. Um, now, spiritual disciplines, uh, what, what do I mean by spiritual disciplines? Spiritual discipline is anything that you do to grow up uh, in your walk with God, to grow up spiritually. Spiritual disciplines are things that we actually do. Now, the Holy Spirit does not do spiritual discipline. Uh, the Lord Jesus does not do spiritual discipline because they don't need to develop themselves. It is the believer who needs spiritual discipline. It is the believer who needs to uh, take some action in response to the grace uh, that God has lavished on us and to the uh, perfection of God, of Christ's work on the cross for us and the fullness of his provision, you know, of power, of, of favor, of grace, of, uh, of anointing, of everything, until the believer begins to put in some discipline to be able to fully appreciate what God has done and what God has provided. All of these provision, all of these blessings will only remain, uh, they will be buried in our spirits and never coming out. And that is why actually the, the term spiritual discipline is, is, is actually a little bit exaggerated because we're going to read a couple of scriptures. And whenever the Bible, the Bible talks about spiritual discipline, it, it really does not even talk about uh, our spirits because our spirits are regenerated in Christ Jesus. Now the Bible also, the Bible talks about building our inner man and uh, I believe that's probably one of the, I don't want to say it's the only one, but it's probably one of uh, the very few passages that really talk about uh, building the inner man. And uh, so we do build our inner man. Another scripture is also, uh, is the one in Jude, where it says, uh, building up your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. That's, that's an activity also of spiritual discipline. And I'm going to do, uh, a, a, an in-depth teaching because some of you, especially some of the new people in the ministry, uh, need to get a grasp of what uh, it is all about to speak in tongues, to pray in the Holy Ghost. And, uh, and, and, and I have a very 
powerful teaching on that. God has been giving me a lot of insight um, into the issue of praying in the spirit. And uh, so I don't want to do that. I don't want to be limited by the uh, 15 to 30 minutes that I have for the morning encounters. So I'm going to uh, record a full in-depth teaching on, on speaking in tongues. And I believe that we're going to share a lot of things that uh, that would be new to many of us. Speaking in tongues is so powerful. You see, so it's that's it's part of spiritual discipline. But uh, most of the other mentions in Scripture that we have of, of spiritual discipline really does not uh, even talk about our spirit. Uh, we see that in Matthew chapter twenty-six and verse forty, uh, uh, where. Jesus had taken his disciples uh, to the mountain. He wanted he wanted them to, to 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 pray with him. He wanted the disciples to watch and pray, to stay awake and pray. And and so in Matthew twenty six and verse forty, it says, "Then he came to the disciples and found them sleeping. He asked Peter, "So could you not stay awake with me one hour?" Now, the King James, uh, in, in, instead of stay awake, the King James Version says, could you not watch with me uh, for even one hour? And then uh, in Matthew chapter, now in the next verse, in verse 41, it says, watch and pray or stay awake and pray so that you won't enter into temptation. And now, now this is what it, I, I will come back to the meaning of, of what we just read. But for now, I just want you to focus on this. He says, the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. So actually, spiritual discipline is really not so much about the spirit because the spirit is willing. That's what the Bible tells us. That's what the Lord Jesus himself said. He says, the spirit is willing. The spirit has no issues. The spirit has no problems. Uh, praying. The Spirit has no problems reading Scripture. This, the Spirit has no problem, you know, uh, doing every other thing, praying in the Holy Ghost. It is the flesh that is weak. It is the flesh that wants to watch TV instead of pray. It is the flesh that wants to watch TV. It is the flesh that wants to eat instead of fast. It is the flesh that wants to do one thing instead of another that it will be more profitable. You see, so uh, the Spirit is willing but the flesh is weak. So spiritual discipline is more about the flesh than it is about the spirit, actually. And um, uh, let's also look at 1 Corinthians, 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 24 to 27. It says, don't you know that the runners, now this is Paul speaking, and he's saying, don't you know that the runners in a stadium all race, but only one receives the prize. He says, run in such a way to win the prize. Now, Paul is saying the context here. He is saying, hey, the, 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 the life that we're called to live is a race. Even though, of course, in, the, in uh, um, somewhere else in Scripture, it is stated that we don't, we don't race against one another. You know, each one of us has a race to run and uh, there is no uh, competition. You have your calling. There's a purpose attached to your life. For you to fulfill and your only uh, competitor your only opponent is yourself so but he says run in such a way to win the race and uh, verse 25 he says now everyone who competes exercises self-control now Paul is saying that since this is a race he, he is comparing Christianity to a race <coughs> and he is saying since this is a race He's saying, since this is a race, uh, there has to be some exercise that goes into that. And he says, now everyone who competes exercises self-control. Now, by self-control here, he doesn't just he, he's not just referring to the ability to not get angry, you know, and to control your emotions. He's also talking about the ability to control your body, to control your flesh. And to put it under constraints, to put it, to, to cause your body and your flesh and, you know, your entire being to do what it has to do so that you can win your race. You know, he says, now everyone who competes, everyone means nobody is exempt. 
whether you have revelation or you don't have revelation. Now, some people in the body of Christ today are trying to make believers think that once they understand a couple of things in scriptures, once they get some, some of the latest rhemas, they no longer need exercise, spiritual exercise. But this is a lie. There is no amount of revelation that exempts you from the need of prayer, from the need of studying, from the need of building yourself up in the things of the Spirit. There is no amount of Bible knowledge that uh, will, 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 will uh, spare you from the, uh, the need, the necessity of disciplining yourself. So it says, now everyone who competes exercises self-control in everything, in everything. Discipline touches all the areas of your life. Spiritual discipline touches every area of your life. Now he says, however, they do it to receive a crown. Now he's now setting a difference between those in the world, you see, and us. He says, they, they exercise like that. They put themselves under such tight control in order to receive a crown that will fade away. But we, we do the same to receive a crown that will never fade away, he says. And in verse 26, he says, Therefore, I do not run like one who runs aimlessly or box like one beating in the air. Hey, Paul is saying, man, I, I have a goal in this thing. I know where I am going. So I can't be careless about this. I can't be accidental about it, about this. I have to be deliberate and intentional about this. I do not run aimlessly or box like one beating the air. He says, instead, this is what I do. He says, I discipline my body. I discipline my body. So again, spiritual discipline is not so much about the spirit. It is more about the body. It is more about the flesh. It is more about the things that are outside uh, the realm of the spirit. It says, instead, I discipline my body and bring it under strict control. I like this. Now I'm reading from uh, the Holman Christian Standard Bible, which is one of my favorite versions. Now the King James says, and I bring it under subjection. So Holman Christian Standard Bible says, I bring it under strict, strict control so that after preaching to others, I myself will not be disqualified. Now he says, I discipline my body and I bring it under strict control. I bring it under strict control. It means my body does what I want it to do. When I want it to read scripture, it reads scripture. When I want it to not sleep, it does not sleep. When I want it to not fornicate, it does not fornicate. When I want it to not lie, it does not lie. When I want it to pray, it prays. He says, I bring it, I bring it under strict control. This control is not only negative control, meaning restrictive control, but it's also positive control, meaning liberating control. Control that sets your body free to do things that it did not want to do, but could do, you know, when pushed to do it. So that's, that's what I call liberating control. Uh, so this is very important. And, and, and now back to Matthew 26, with the words of the Lord Jesus, he says, uh, he asked Peter in uh, Matthew 26, verse 40, so could you not stay awake with me even one hour? Now, uh, some of you heard me say this in Aslam. One hour, uh, I believe by the Holy Spirit that one hour, when Jesus asked this question, he says, could you not stay awake with me even one hour? Could not you not watch with me even one hour? Could you not pray with me even one hour? It is because Jesus, you know, one hour is a, is a spiritual duration. One hour, Jesus came to planet Earth and he discovered that in his body, you know, one hour was, uh, uh, one hour is a spiritual duration that the body needs at times, most of the times, especially for the untrained. When you're already trained, there are some things that you can access from the very first minute. That you begin to talk to God, but you know, for for you to move from the natural to the supernatural, sometimes you have to just tarry. You just have to stay there through the dryness of your prayer moment. You just have to stay there through 
uh, the, the the seeming because it's seeming it's not dry it is just it just seems to be dry okay you have just have to wait and tarry and stay there that, that's why the Bible that's why the Lord Jesus uses the word tarry you know talking about uh, what the disciples had to do while waiting for the Holy Spirit is tarry meaning wait you know a tarry has has a, a connotation of something that is not easy to do it has a connotation of something that you have to do by faith even when you don't really feel like something is happening and so he says could you not wait with me could you not stay awake with me even one hour one hour sometimes is what it takes for your flesh to break and allow the spirit to come forth and express itself so what we we will we, we'll, we'll probably talk about it again some other time and then it says in verse 41 of this same matthew 26 stay awake and pray no, no, no. I, I, let me just say this here. He says, stay awake and pray. Your King James Bible says, watch and pray. Uh, my, my Holman Christian Standard Bible says, stay awake and pray. Now, there's a very powerful message here. Stay, stay awake and pray. Now, Jesus is telling us that we need to get to a place where we control our sleep. I know this is difficult, you know, but this is why it's called discipline. Discipline means, hey, you did not want to do 10 press-ups, but I am pushing you to do 10 press-ups. You're going to go up 10 times. Okay? That is discipline for a sports person. You know, it is pushing, pushing, you know, constantly pushing the limits of what, it's, of what his or her body wants to do naturally. But the body can do it. It just needs to be pushed. But it, it, but it just doesn't want to do it naturally. Okay, so Jesus says, stay awake and pray. Maybe you want to sleep at times. He says, stay awake. Uh, that is why there is so much power in all-night prayer. Because it's, oh my God. Let me not even dive into that. But I hope somebody is seeing something here. Stay awake and pray. Sometimes you'll be feeling sleepy. Hey, Please don't be don't be legalistic about this, okay? Uh, you many of you have heard me say that sometimes even while you're praying, uh, you fall asleep. Hey, don't judge yourself, don't condemn yourself. I fall asleep so many times when I'm praying, you know, and uh, and I know that I, I love falling asleep in the presence of God. I'm fellowshipping with my Father, so if I fall asleep while talking with Him, I I I, I sleep in the Holy Ghost, you know. And then when I get up, I, I just pick up where we left off. You know, God is not that complicated. But there is a specific, uh, the, it, there, there is a specific instruction here. There's a specific principle here that uh, apart from those times when you'll be praying and, and you fall asleep, which happens, I believe, to everybody, there will be times when your prayer will have to defy your sleep. You see? Sometimes your discipline, your desire, your quest for God will have to sometimes lead you into some disciplines that will have to defy your sleep. You know, you, 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 you would normally sleep for six hours, but because you want something extra, you will sleep for four hours. Maybe, well, not for all your life, but maybe for a season that you have determined that you want to just see God in, in in an extraordinary way, okay? You, you you you. By the way, those of you who are still sleeping eight hours, let me tell you this straight: there is no world changer, there is nobody in history who has achieved anything sig very significant, and I was sleeping eight hours. I can't, you know, check out the history of all great men, uh, great men and women that have walked the face of the earth. Uh, there may be exceptions, but you really will not find a lot of people who sleep up to eight hours and who are great achievers, both believers and unbelievers. You see, because they have used this principle of stay awake while others are sleeping, you know, they're doing some things. While others are sleeping, they are doing some things. So stay awake is a, is a mighty principle. It's disciplining yourself constraining your, your yourself 
to be able to do something that would benefit you. All right, so uh, wow, wow, time flies. This is already 20 minutes. And uh, so for this first day, let me just move into uh, one of the first disciplines. I'll just maybe introduce it and try to challenge you. I want you to get in to the word of God. Get in the word. Get in the word. The discipline, <coughs> the number one discipline that I want to be discussing is uh, the discipline of reading and, uh, and, and, and memorizing and studying and meditating on God's word. Get in the word. Get in the word. Now, let me just rush over this quickly so that uh, the audio will not be more than 30 minutes. It, uh, scripture says in Joshua chapter 1. Now, I, I hope you've gotten the point on spiritual discipline. Spiritual discipline is a must for anybody who wants to go far in, in, you know, with God. And anybody who wants to even go far in anything, anything for that matter, needs discipline in this world. Anything. Now, this discipline does not mean a strict strict uh, timetables that you have to follow from morning to evening strict timetables don't work don't don't work for everybody you know they don't even work for me i've never been able to respect strict timetables but there are some things that you have to make up your mind that you're going to do every day that you're going to do habitually that you're going to do regularly you see that you're going to be consistent in and uh, uh one of those things which i want to share with us this morning after, the, after this long introduction of 20 minutes, uh, so one of those things is the Word of God. You need to get full of God's Word. Uh, Joshua was to take over from Moses, and he was to lead the people of God to the promised land. And God gave him a command that he, Joshua, if you, if you are going to succeed, this is what you're going to do. In Joshua chapter 1 and verse 8, he says, this book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein, for then shalt thou, shalt, for then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and then shalt thou have good success. Okay, um, so that was from the King James let me read it also from uh, the Holman Christian Standard Bible. It says, this book of instruction must not depart from your mouth. You are to recite it. You are to recite it. You know, sometimes we just hear it from the King James. We're used to, 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 to the rendering from the King James Version. And so when we read, shall not depart out of thy mouth, it doesn't occur to many of us that he's actually, talk, he's actually saying, you must recite it, you must say it out loud, you must be a word talker. And so Holman Christian Standard Bible says it in a way that I love, it just goes straight, and it says, you are to recite it day and night, you must recite the word of God. He says, so that you may carefully observe everything written in it, for then you will prosper and succeed in whatever you do. Now, uh, let me read a third version, Net Bible. It says, this law, this law scroll must not leave your lips. You must memorize it day and night so that you can carefully obey all that is written in it. Then you will prosper and be successful. Okay, now, so there's one thing, one main thing that I want us to see here. These three versions make it clear to us that we need to uh, speak the word of God. And then uh, the last one makes it clear to us that in, just in case you hadn't understood it from the first two, this last one makes it clear that we have to memorize scripture. And of course, you can't get to a place of, of memorizing if you do not, first of all, read it. So reading scripture reading it, absorbing it, I mean, feeding on Scripture, feeding aggressively on Scripture. This is one thing um, whose overdose does not, uh, does not have adverse effects on yourself, on your system. You know, an overdose of the Word of God is never bad for anybody. 
You must feed on the word of God. One thing, I don't have much time left for this session. I simply want to encourage and challenge everybody under the sound of my voice. We'll surely come back uh, on Thursday session. Uh, I'll say more on this. I will uh, give us some tips. I'll, I'll just share a couple of things concerning uh, growing in the word of God. But for today, I want you to just uh, remember this. You, I, I want to invite you to make a commitment to read scripture like never before and to store it in your heart. In the book of Psalm uh, 119, the Bible says, uh, it's David speaking in verse 11. It says, Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. You see, one of the reasons why believers are weak today, one of the reasons why uh, the standards of integrity, one of the reasons why uh, our experience of integrity, our experience of holiness, our experience of, of virtue as believers has dropped and degenerated significantly over the past many years is because believers are not filled with the Word of God. That's... It, it's it's a simple uh, it's it's a simple factor. It's a it's a fact. It's a fact. You see, uh, our dominion over sin in, in in our experience, our experiential dominion over sin, is sometimes directly uh, related to our to the amount of God's word that we have stored, not just in our heads, but in our hearts, in our hearts, in our hearts. Are you filled with, with, with the Word of God? Now, I'm not talking about these believers who are filled with the messages of their man of God. No, I'm talking about believers who can read the Word of God for themselves and who are full of it. It is the Word of God that Jesus used to resist temptation. What do you, and, and it is the Word of God that he had within himself. And then he also said, <coughs> it is the Word that you know, that you shall know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. Sometimes you still don't get free after you've heard the truth from a man of God. You know, but you need to know the truth for yourself. You need to go into the Word of God and store it in your heart. Jesus needed the Word of God to put the devil to flight when he came to tempt him. You know, what are you going to put your own devils to flight when they come for you? Okay, let the Word of God dwell in you so richly. The Bible says in, um, in Colossians chapter 3 and verse 16, it says, let the word of God, uh, Colossians 3, 16, let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns. Sing it, you know, declare it in spiritual songs, singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. I was reading uh, Colossians chapter 3, verse 16. You must get full of the word of God. Absorb the word of God. Now, let me just say this. One thing that has really um, made the difference in my life was my university years. During my university years, uh, as I was a student, an undergraduate student in the University of Boya, one thing that has set the foundation, is, that has set a solid, a rock-solid foundation in my life and in my walk with God was my passion for the word of God. You see, I, as a student, I would spend three hours every day reading the scripture, reading and studying the scripture. Three hours every day, sometimes six hours on Saturdays, five hours, four hours, you see. And, you know, this has been a solid foundation that I've laid in my life just by absorbing the word of God aggressively and, uh, you know, so, so passionately. So I want to encourage everybody. Uh, I don't want to spend much more time on this session because I want you to be able to download it easily. So uh, we'll see again next Thursday and we'll talk about this. So, but before then, let me just give you this assignment. I want everybody uh, to make up your mind that every year from this year, every year, there will not be one year that goes by without you having read the entire Bible. You know, I'll explain, I'll tell you more, uh, I'll tell you more about why you should take that kind, make that kind of commitment. Now, if you, if you make the commitment and you, and you don't really succeed, 
it will be not it won't be a sin it's just you just are trying to put yourself under some discipline like a great sportsman who has some objectives and he wants to win a race you will not just go about this thing like everybody else who has no goal you know paul said i do not run aimlessly i have an aim i am following a vision i am running after my purpose i have to fulfill it and so i can't afford to just sit down and watch life go by like everybody else okay so I, I, so I want you to make that commitment, and then I'll, I'll tell you more about this uh, on Thursday. On Thursday, I will just throw a challenge. I, I, I don't know if, if many of you uh, tried to read the entire New Testament during the, thir the 30 days of glory access, but I think I'm just going to reload that challenge, and uh, I would like every AFECA member, every ACF member, every AAA member, who uh, who is still following us? Who's following the ministry? Every ACF member within the first uh, uh, first month of school, you know, within the next thirty days, I want everybody to just take up the challenge to read the entire New Testament. And on Thursday, I'll show you that it's actually very, very, very easy to do. I'll give you some practical tips. We'll go over a couple of things. So don't forget. We're talking about spiritual disciplines, and it's all about disciplining your body, disciplining your flesh, keeping everything about you that is not your spirit under control so that your spirit can find its full expression and can freely, freely uh, fellowship with God and have God use you and, and freely express himself through you. So this is it for today. Um, you guys are blessed. You can leave your comments below and please uh, remind your friends who are not who who are already uh, who've been added to the group already and who may not see this uh, just when you see your friends after you've listened to this just make sure they have listened just call them and say hey have you gotten today's message all right so just let's just make sure that all the people i want every single person subscribed on this group to really uh, get the audio and uh, links will also be provided just below uh, for uh, for people to be able to download so that you can save it long term and you can also share links with other people uh, links will also be on our uh, also already on our Facebook page so uh, you can share that page so that many people can have access to the same uh, message that you got this morning okay you guys are blessed and uh, see you on Thursday. And I'm expecting you guys, your testimonies and uh, your comments and uh, anything that the Lord uh, has done for you. Let us also do that. You guys are blessed. Love you in Jesus' name. Let me just pray for you. Father, I thank you. Uh, I thank you, Lord. Because in this season, you want us to be disciplined. You want us to grow like never before. You want us to go further than we had ever been before father i bless you because your grace is available your grace is available lord it isn't just about our strength oh god but i know that where there is a will then the spirit of god takes over holy spirit i ask you to just take over you know we're going to make some some fresh resolutions we're going to take up some challenges but the holy spirit no one can do this by their own strength and so i ask you to help us i ask you to help me i ask you to help everyone listening let your name let the name of jesus christ be glorified help us to grow through the disciplines of the spirit help us to grow by keeping our bodies under subjection help us to grow help us to become passionate for the word create a fresh passion for the word of god in us in the name of jesus Amen.